Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. So today I'm going to be working on this 2011 BMW 328i. So pretty much has the N52 motor and it has this whistling noise coming from the engine compartment and it sounds a little bit like this. So pretty much it's just uh, the PCB system is pretty much faulty so I'm just replacing the whole thing. More likely it's just a diaphragm inside the valve cover that needs to be replaced. It's not serviceable separately, you got to replace the whole valve cover. So generally, if you have like a valve cover uh, leak, leaking oil or anything like that, most people just go ahead and just replace the gasket, just get the whole kit. One thing to note while you have the valve cover off, check the vanal sprockets, make sure there's no uh, bolts that are sheared off or missing or anything. And if they are, then yeah, you just gotta pretty much replace that. On this car, for some reason I looked, but I don't remember ever like really checking on to it. I was like in autopilot mode. So once I started the car, scanned it, I noticed I had the code for the vanal sprockets, so. Go ahead and check those out. Just here having the oil drain out. So I'm just gonna let it sit and drain out and then I could put the drain plug back in and then go from the top and then start working on it. So this will be the only part that I'll be doing underneath the car. So I have all my parts on the go ahead that I got from Complex 7. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up everything. It's two boxes worth. So it's all the parts I need to do this whole job. So I'm just gonna unbox it now and make sure everything is there. Oil, so five, six, seven quarts. All right, so this one got the filter in it. So I'll put that to the side. Multiple. Oil filter housing gasket. The bolts. Wait. Oh, they're supposed to be three. So the bolts for the oil filter housing gasket, an invoice, and here we have the valve cover. So we have the PCV holes going over the, to that part by the underneath the intake manifold. So brand new one of these because they generally crack when you take off the valve cover gasket. Here's the oil filler cap and the hole valve cover so everything looks good to go we have all the parts it has the screws yep let me see and the gasket's already on all right. and gasket also here too all right so we're good to go so after verifying that i got everything i need i'm gonna go ahead and uh get out this filter piece not the filter piece but the washer so I could go ahead and change, put the bolt back in since all the oil is drained out. So place no crush washer, not a crush washer, but the washer itself. And we should be done with the bottle. So I was just pulling out the oil container and I noticed I did not leave one drop of oil on the ground. Pretty happy about that. So I was just thinking a while ago, I was gonna put it on the ground, but I think I'm just gonna leave it where it is. Cause the height where it's at right now feels pretty good. I can access everything. And in case if a bolt falls or something, I could easily just go down, take off the pan real quick and get it out. So I think I'm gonna leave it in the air. Head off to the trunk. So we got the trunk open. Before you do this, make sure that the doors, I'm gonna leave a window down. Left the window down. So just in case anything, Leave the trunk open and yeah, turn this tab over here. It's supposed to be like that. Turn it to the left and just pull it out. Negative over here and I got a 10 millimeter bolt on here, socket. So it's gonna loosen it up and pull up. There we go. Lay it soft to the side. First thing I'm gonna do is use an E12 on this bolt right here to remove this bar along here. So I'm gonna use something like this. Stick it right there. Turn. Hmm. That's so loose. But yeah, this bolt right here is gonna take it out. I don't know which one it is. I gotta go double check real quick. But 
whole point is we're just gonna go ahead and remove this bar. All right, so I have this loose right now. So I'm gonna stick this right here for now, but I'm gonna put it back into this spot once I get this piece out of the way. I don't have a correct socket, it's an E socket. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a 14. And it fits 14 and it fits pretty good on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that piece off, not take it off, but like loosen it. Don't take it fully out because it's a pain to get it back into the hole down here. So let's loosen it enough so you can just go ahead and pull this out. So with that bracket out the way, so that bracket out the way, we could go ahead and have clean access to lift up the valve cover. Well, once all this stuff is tucked away, but still. So this is the bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and put this here for safekeeping so we don't lose it. So next we're gonna go ahead and uh, take off the Valtronic motor connector supply right here. So pull the tabs out of those. And then these, the eccentric shaft piece, you could put something like a little uh, flathead real quick and then put it right there and pull it back and it'll come right off. I already did that, so yeah, this is how it comes off. Put it off to the side. And then we're gonna go through each coil, pop it up, pull each piece off. So make sure when you pull it off, pull it tight like this and lift so that it pushes its connector, sub connector all the way out easily. So with all these connectors off right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the coil packs out. Still look pretty good. And no oil in there. So yeah, what I do is I just take something like a screwdriver or flathead or something, I stick it through here, and then I use both hands on each side, give it even pressure and pull up and it comes out. Some people go in and pull, and it works for them, but I just like to give it even pressure so that it doesn't break the tabs or anything like that. But I don't know, either way you choose how to take them off, but yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and take these all out now. All right, so all the coils are out and everything is good except on number two. Look, it's leaking oil right there. Went ahead and these are so number one, two, three, four, five, six. So all of them look good except number two. And number three look like it has a little, I don't know, flowering or whatever, but two is definitely leaking. So we have two grounds that I'm gonna have to take off right now next. So one here and one over here on this side. Man, that is rusty. I'm gonna have to clean that up. But yeah, these two need to come off. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a, what is this? Uh, I'm gonna use an eight millimeter and just pretty much go ahead and pull it out. Before I even do anything like that, I like to put these back in, not fully. Just have them like blocking the hole because I'm putting them all in just like that. Just let them seat because I just don't like the simple fact that something like say I'm taking the bolts off and it just falls into that and it creates a whole mess. The grounds are off now and both of them are off. So the only thing left right now on this little section to do is to take off this little harness connector bundle. So down here you're going to see like some tab. So you just go ahead and squish down on it and then you'll be able to pull it up. So I already did one side, so like so, these tabs. So you go down the whole length of the piece and you're able to bring it up. Now to some delicate parts. So I'm just gonna move these O2 wires out the way. Take them off these tabs like so. And just have them loose going over. That way they loosen off the fuel injector harness piece. So the way to take these off is there's some clips, but if you put your hand, like put your left hand here and your right hand here and give it even pressure, like yank a little bit like so, and you'll come right up. So I already got this piece off and just go down the line slowly, yeah, gently. It's like a firm, gentle force you want to say you want to give it and it'll all come all off so just like that and they're all off and you can just pull it over to the side 
like so. Um, I'm also gonna unplug this too. Old sensor, and I can leave that alone for now. But yeah, that's how they orient inside of the injector. So right now the task is to put these wires in such a way that it's more easier to maneuver this out. Or actually take the bolts out right now. That's the main focus. So underneath here, there's like a little tab. So you can just go ahead and pull these wires out of it. Like so. And it'll give you more room to move this around. Not much, but way better than it was before. Alright, those are those. And then we're gonna go, to, go over here to the cover. It's only one of them on there. So just go ahead and put this in the unlock position. And then we could just go ahead and have something right here at the edges or this underneath here. Just put your finger and pull, put your finger down here and pull towards that way both on each side and we're off. Let's go ahead and pull it off. Oh yeah, we got the box back. Do the same thing there also. All right, needed two hands to do that. So yeah, so that's off the way. And then we can just like lift up on these right here. And it just gives you a little bit more maneuverability. So it's gonna go ahead and uh, Put this in a way that like so so that i'm able to access all the bolts so i have everything tucked out the way i have these wires over here tucked in over here actually from earlier i didn't take off this sensor so i plugged the coolant sensor so i unplugged it and it gave me enough room to pull it all the way over to here this is the injector not injector but coil plate bracket thingy Went ahead and pushed it over to the side and have it behind uh, was it the positive jumper port right here. And then these wire have it lifted up over to the here. And then the only part left is this. On this side, I just lifted up this off this bracket. And what I'm ready to do is I should be able to have it pulled back easier. Easier. It's a lot more room. So this is the most sketch part of this whole process and pretty much is just removing the biotronic motor. So you don't want it to mess up any of the pins or anything like that. So first we're going to use an E8 underneath here and make sure it's like a thin one and use this and just remove this bolt right here first. Okay so at the back of the biotronic motor once that bolt down here is out I went ahead and put a T25 in and I turned it clockwise all the way until it won't you feel some resistance. It's going to be loose, and then you, you'll know when it hits some resistance, and that's where you stop. So leave that in there, and I'm going to go ahead and take out these two bolts that are in here on both sides. Not these, but they're right here. Here you can see them perfectly right there, those two bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these two out the way. Just got to make sure I'm pretty careful not to drop these bolts in there. But if they do drop, you get like a magnet or something to take them out. But I just don't want to go through all that hassle, so be careful just pulling these out. So I'm gonna use a E8, E8 socket. Um, put it in like so, it's pretty slim. So I'm gonna use that and just take these out. So I'm gonna loosen these out. And as I come back, I'm just gonna bat this one out too. Just pretty much go ahead and you turn these to the left, loosening, turn out a little bit, and then you come on this side, you turn a little bit. So now it's loose, it's like I have some slack, and then you just turn it to the left, and you can see it start to back out some. All right, so it's backed out all the way, and just remove both screws on left and right side and just pull it up you're good to go so normally i'll just use my scan tool and just go ahead and put it in service mode but most people don't have the scan tool so 
easiest way is just to go ahead and just show you this way how to do it. So if you use a scan tool, it'll just go ahead and put it in a service mode automatically. And then when you reach down here, all you gotta do is just disconnect, blah, 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 and pop out it go. You don't gotta mess with this bolt back here. So now that the Valvetronic motor is finally out, the only other thing you got left right now is just this piece right here off the PCB vent. So more than likely this thing is gonna break, but normally you could try and not break it if you, it's almost like you gotta like push down on it and try to pull it back towards the right that way. So pull and go back and you might have to try to use like a small flat head or something to help you pry while pushing. Cause you really wanna push down to get this thing off. Cause if you break it, then you gotta go ahead and replace the whole thing. So, so in this valve cover job, I already got a new one already, so I'm not too worried about breaking it, so I'm just gonna like pop it right off. So I just went ahead and just broke it right here and it's off the way and disconnected. So I'm gonna get to that one, so I go ahead and start working on that side. But let me pop these off, so there's no more, there's no more, uh, no more bolts that should be dropping in now, so we should be good to go. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we can start taking off all these bolts along the perimeter of the motor. And then we have this one here. Uh, there's one right here. I think that's a 10. And then this one right here. And once that's out, we just go ahead and just lift the valve cover up. All right, so I went ahead and loosened all the bolts going on all the way around the whole perimeter and use a 10 and loosen this one and this one also. And then I removed this one right from here. It's a 10 also. So with all those out the way, I should be able to pry up on the valve cover and get it off. So I seen right here, looks to be a good spot. I can use like a little prior to go ahead and lift it up. But some, I normally notice sometimes they'll pull up by themselves but in this case it's heavily sealed so i'm gonna have to pry it up a bit i got it pretty much loose right now but the part where i was able to get like something between it was right here and back here on the tip right back here you should be able to have like a little piece indentation where you could put something in between to go ahead and lift it up so this is what I used. I went ahead and put it in the rag and put it right here so I don't scratch up the block or anything like that. And I just gently pry it up on this edge right here and at the edge back here behind the back right here at the valve cover. So once I did that, please make sure all these bolts are loose because we go ahead and pull it up and at first I had an issue with one of them right here. It was loosened but wasn't fully all the way out. So it kept it from coming off. So if you have any issues, pull it off. Just make sure, double check, triple check, make sure the bolts are loosened. All right, so it's off now. And pretty much the way I took it out was this side came up first and then you lift the rear up. So it's like at a downward slant slope. So lift this, the front first and then lift the back and then you could ease it out like that up. So. I'm gonna take all this off and then go through with some um, parts cleaner and just put on a rag and wipe up around the maintenance surfaces where the gasket's supposed to go. So I just gotta spend some time and make sure to clean this whole part up because the last thing you wanna do is do all this and then all of a sudden start leaking again. And more likely that's one of the reasons why it might start to leak. So make sure to prep and clean the surface good. So I'm just gonna use some of this and spray it on a rag and pretty much go along the whole edges and all the way in between the spark plug holes. So all around the whole perimeter of the block and also along here. So everywhere where the gasket should be placed. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out so that it's a little easier to clean out along those parts. It's fresh and clean now and everything's looking pretty much shiny, spick and spun and all that. So cleaned out all in between there along the edges 
make sure to definitely get down in those edges real good because if it's ever going to leak it's not going to leak up here it's going to be leaked on this end coming all the way to the back Cause remember the motor is tilted to the side like so so yeah we're ready to put the valve cover back on so this one the gasket's already installed come pre-installed bolts are all lined up uh, the gasket the sensor over here so everything is pretty much ready i just gotta just put it onto the motor and we're good to go so all the bolts are replaced and everything so finally got this thing on and yeah it was a pain in the butt so one thing i did change was i took this piece off off the wiring harness thing so pretty much you just there's some tabs you pry it up pull them out those uh tab spaces inside and i got some zip ties and took them and zip tied them to the windshield washer windshield wiper so that gave me enough room right there so the main thing that was giving me a hiccup was right around here over the tower is like this long long piece that's on the valve cover so i found it was pretty easy so i found it was pretty easy to put it on from this side so that way i could monitor how it was looking on that end over there so once i did that made those changes uh, i went ahead and went on pretty easily i haven't done a uh, bmw n52 install in a while usually i'm working on n54s but yeah this was <laughs> yeah it took me a long time to remember how to finish so once i did that I went ahead and went on real smooth so i just made sure put my finger around here make sure the gasket was still on good and it was so i go ahead and start twerking these down in their crisscross pattern so i'm gonna go ahead and put that graphic up right now So as paranoid as I am, before I even finish pushing everything back together, I'm going to go ahead and put the engine cap cover on now. Because I would hate for something to fall inside and I got to take the whole thing apart just to go ahead and fish something out. So I'm going to go ahead and push this on. So you pretty much push this down on there and then it pretty much closes. So just push it down. I'm going to need two hands for this, but yeah, it's pretty much how you do it. So push down and it's good to go now. So yep. we're good. So I have all the bolts tightened up right now. So the main thing when you're doing it first, you just gotta make sure what I generally do is in the edges, I just like start the bolts in those corners. And then after that, I just follow the diagram and just start from here, one, two, three, four, and through that whole diagram I'll put up right here and I just go through there the first phase is I just start the bolts to make sure they go into the thread to find you can jiggle it to make sure that everything is seated good and then the second stage I go through that whole pattern again and I snug it down until it's, it's like snug down on the block and then on third phase that's when I make sure it's tight on the whole thing so I just go through the, that three times and pretty much it'll not leak Pretty much if you don't go through those phases right there pretty much most likely what might happen is that you might get over here tight and good but by the time you reach over here it will be hard and you'll be cross threading into the block so it's pretty much to keep the whole valve cover giving even pressure as you slowly tighten it down so right now i pretty much think this is the most delicate part of the whole assembly is pretty much removing the valvetronic motor and also tighten it down the valve cover because you could waste all that time right now without doing it right and just start leaking and having all, all these issues so it's good right here to just slow down and take your time so i started putting the valvetronic motor in now so what i did was i went ahead and put both of these bolts in so here and here so i started them and then i put the socket into here what is this again uh t25 into there and i turn it clockwise so i turn it clockwise and it starts to pull into the valve cover and then i start tightening these down like that so tighten down turn tighten down turn I keep doing that until it's finally pulled into the block not the block the valve cover Both sides are tightened up and right here is already put to the where it's turned where it has resistance so that's where i stopped and just left it there 
and then I just went ahead and put the bolts in that's down here. Since all those are all in right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and start putting in the coil packs. So put those in now, and after that, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the put in the injector harness. So all you gotta do is just line it up inside those uh tabs right here to the holes and then just push them in like that just make sure they're in don't like forcefully push anything in just uh finesse it in a little bit so the coils in and the fuel injector connector is all in place I went over here into the dme box and went ahead and pushed back in the wires and the sub connector harnesses back into the appropriate spots and everything is pretty much lined up good now we can go ahead and just use this right here, the sub connector, and connect it back to the valve cover here, and then start putting back in the wires to the ignition coils all the way up, and also plugging in back in the valvetronic motor. All right, so all that is all connected now, and pretty much gonna go ahead and put the sensor in, eccentric shaft sensor, make sure it's lined up good nice and secure everything's looking good and remember these wires how we pull them off of the bracket down here make made sure to go ahead and reroute them back into it so they're down right here so they're into that wire right now so everything looks good now and also for here put it back in lock it in place and my thing looks good, the level's good. So technically right now the whole valve cover side job is done. So I would go ahead and um, put this other side back in now and then put the cowl back on and call it a day if it was just a valve cover gasket. But remember, broke that piece back here. So I need to get that changed. And I'm also changing the oil filter housing gasket also go ahead and put these uh bolts back on for the grounds so here and here so i noticed in the box that it came with brand new uh alternator bolts so there's four of them so i was like apparently when you're doing this job to replace that uh vent hose down there easiest way would be just go ahead and just remove the alternator and I'm noticing, yeah, just removing this air box, pull the alternator, move this out the way, you'll be able to put your hand right here and get to it. And also, I'll be able to get access to that bolt right here to take off the oil filter housing gasket. So don't have to take off the intake manifold and I don't gotta worry about messing up the intake manifold gasket or any of that stuff. So that's a big plus for me. Pretty much push down on this real hard and pull. I already loosened it by myself. That's why it looks so easy to come off right now. But uh, right here, you can use like a piece of a flathead or a pick or even use a nail if it's strong enough. Like lift up and then pull. Lift up and pull. All right, with the clip off and I moved that over to the side, I went ahead and got a, what was it, flathead and loosened this right here. So just loosen it, keep it on, on tech, fully off. And I use a number 10 and remove these socket right there. And then here, you're just gonna pull it up and then try to take it out this tab right here. So I'm trying not to take these two bolts out right here to remove this. So I wanna leave this in place, but I might have to take it off, but for now I'm just gonna leave it in and see what happens. So the air box out the way, you can see how much room uh, has been created so far and especially the access to the alternator. And once the alternator is gone, you can really put your hand right through there, disconnect the stuff, and go up here and grab that bolt that's behind the oil filter housing. So yeah, this is gonna be pretty beneficial. But for now, I'm gonna grab a, this is a T60. And right down here, let me get some light. All right, so I have the T60 down here, and I have it on this uh, breaker bar right here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and like, make sure it's securely in, and bring it to the left, and then just, take off just this piece right here off the alternator. All right, so the belt is off the alternator, so I'm now free to use an E12 and start removing these four bolts. So two up here and two down here. I'm not taking these pieces off, the 
battery connector and the uh, other plug right here onto it. I'm going to see if I could just lay it down right here and see if it uh, gives me enough room to just have it sitting down here. All right, so once the bolts are out, it pretty much rolled over to the side. You just rolled it to the side, and that's it. You got all the room to go up in there and get access to that, uh, to this piece right here. I finally got this piece out right here, and yeah, the first one I got easily, I just put my hand up here and pushed this tab, and I was able to just pull it out. But I just broke, I broke this piece right here because there was no way I was going to get the whole thing out good or get enough grip to get to it. So I just squeezed this one, broke this one, and I just pulled it on out right out of here. And then after that, that's when I came and I used this. And I pretty much went ahead and hit one of those tabs right here. This is the end piece you're gonna have. So I just broke one, broke the tab. And as you can see, broke the tab and then it just pulls right out easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to fish this through here and see if I get up to there or I don't know maybe I have to go from there but I believe this one will be the most efficient way of doing it so I had to go ahead and take this back out because I was like wait a second this one down here wasn't oriented the right way but apparently this part right here if you turn it like grip it firmly you could turn it to the direction that you need so this is the direction that it needed to go initially it was pointed forward um, or south like this way so that went easier than i thought i just pushed it through right here and then i had my other hand on this set and right here feeling for it to come and once i i felt it right here i just pulled it up so now all i gotta do is just plug that piece in over there and then put both of those hoses on each connector that's available there all right so i have my eight millimeter ratcheting wrench under here so i have my hand here and over here going to the left to loosen this bolt and then we have up here already loosened up so i just have a small stubby one so to the left so the same thing down here on that bolt right here to the left as I was taking those bolts off, I realized it might be easy just to go ahead and take out the filter now and get it all out the way. And then once I uh, take these out, clean it up, it'll be everything most likely will just drain off into the block. So got the filter out now. And yeah, later on, I'm going to go ahead and change the gasket off here and the gasket here. And yeah, I'm just going to put this over, not tight, but loose. So nothing gets into there as I take these bolts off. So I'm gonna continue taking these bolts off and just like lean the oil filter housing off to the side. One thing to note is take off this bolt and that bolt. So that way, when you're taking out this bolt, you could pull the filter this way. So that when, if you don't do that, then you're gonna mess up, end up having to take this piece off right here. And then it's gonna run into this or obstruct it. So you won't be able to get it off. So as you're, once you loosen those other two and this is getting loose, you just pull on this this way and it pretty much pulls the bolt back here so you get more leeway to go ahead and get this bolt out. So the bolt's out and yeah, this gasket is done done. So yeah, it's out. So right now I'm just gonna try to use a pick and get this gasket out and then put in a new one before cleaning up the surface. All right, so I went ahead and got the gasket off and I went ahead and used rag cleaned off the whole inside of this piece right here so the main part is get all the gunk off and sprayed it down with some parts cleaner dried it out and should be good to go right now so i'm just going to go ahead and put the new gasket in and i have to clean up this surface also and then i could go ahead and start reassembly the gasket on and the surface is cleaned so i got my new bolts and yeah so the shortest one goes at the bottom and then this one goes in the middle, and then this one goes to the back by the manifold. Also, I don't think if I mentioned, but yeah, on these two bolts to loosen them, it's left, left, turn these both left, and then it'll be the opposite for down here. So this will be turned to the right to loosen. 
All right, so everything is tightened up now. So I started with this one first and then I threaded uh, this one a little bit and I just went along and just snugged it a little bit. And then I started the other one in the back and then I just fully tightened them all down, giving them even pressure as I went from around in a rotation with them. So took the cap off now and I just went ahead and got the, what's this? The gasket piece off the bottom and at the tip. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these on now Put a little oil around it, put the filter in, and tighten that back up. All right, so filter is changed, and now we could go ahead and just roll this back up into the onto the block. So before I even do that, I'm gonna go ahead and change over this piece bracket right here onto two of these right here, and pretty much throw these out. So these are brand new ones that we're gonna use, and yeah, actually I gotta go clean up some of that oil that's spilled. But yeah, I'm gonna clean that up and then pretty much roll this back up into place, put these in, and um, yeah, the alternator should be back in now. Alternator plug back in. This piece is oriented correctly for that uh, bracket piece that I transferred over. I went ahead and uh, put the belt back on. So all I did was just like pull it back and put it right back on to the top of it right here. And while you're down there, just make sure that none of the other pieces the belt didn't slip off any of the other parts so yeah everything looks good and really looking over all the work make sure everything looks good so so far so good so right now i'm just going to go ahead and take the ear box and put it back in so pretty much from the reverse put this piece in right here tighten it up put the sensor and put those screws in right here so all right so we have all this put together almost on the home stretch and just have to put the last final stuff in this vent put that back in and the good thing about bmw all their sensors are like the same length of where it's supposed to be so you really don't gotta mark anything that's in and then this one right here All good to go so uh pretty much almost done just gotta go ahead and add some oil to the motor before anything started or whatever but i still need to go ahead and put this arm back on from over here when i was doing the valve cover so put the arm back on and then the whole valance thing on top and we should be good to go installed back again and everything is good to go also put the engine cover and the only thing left really to do is put some engine oil in and also to fill back up with a little bit with um or pretty much top up the engine coolant because when we was over here you know a little bit of coolant came out so i just want to top it up make sure nothing have any issues with that so the only thing we got left to do right now is to go ahead and put the negative cable back into the car and yeah i'm gonna put that in right now so back in the car now and this is the final step and we need to relearn the positions of the biotronic motor so Pretty much you come in and you put the car in ignition mode. So that's like two presses of the start button without starting the um, motor, have your feet off the brakes and you let it sit for like 30 seconds, turn it off again, and then do another 30 seconds in ignition mode. So two cycles of that. And then after that, then you'd be able to start the car. So right now you could either do it that way, but since I have the scan tool, I'm just going to go ahead and do the relearn here. So go through that process and pretty much relearn the limits on that but either way you could do it just took the cover off to check to make sure there's no oil leaks and everything looks good no oil leaks or anything like that so we're good to go and we can go ahead and pretty much close out this video and hope this helped out somebody in some way of trying to do this install and yeah have a good rest of your day